it's time for another action-packed edition of Weather for Weather Geeks, the midweek edition. It's Wednesday evening, the 22nd day of March here in 2023. We're now a couple of days into spring and a couple of days into Severe Weather Awareness Week in Ohio. We'll talk about that momentarily, but let's just do a quick review of today's numbers because despite it being kind of a gloomy day overall, clouds and even a sprinkle in spots, uh, temperatures were above average. We got up to 53 this afternoon. We'll do even better than this tomorrow, and that's again despite clouds and even a pretty good chance for some wet weather at times on our Thursday. But as I mentioned, Severe Weather Awareness Week rolls on in the state of Ohio. This is the week every year we uh, bring some reminders of different uh, things to keep in mind if severe weather threatens, some facts and figures and reminders. And uh, one of the basics, one of the basic tenets of, of severe weather awareness is knowing the difference between a watch and a warning. Both words start with W and some get them confused sometimes. This is an easy way to remember, kind of a fun way to remember the difference. Warning is definitely the more serious of the two. Usually a watch is like a heads up, a severe thunderstorm watch, a flood watch, a tornado watch. That's issued hours usually in advance of some sort of weather event or potential weather event as just kind of a heads up that you need to be weather aware uh, that day. A warning is issued, a flood warning, a tornado warning, a severe thunderstorm warning when a particular type of weather is occurring right now or is about to occur. And so that's kind of the basic difference. Whenever you see a warning, definitely time to take things seriously and jump into action. All right, lots of weather myths out there. Chances are, if you're watching this video, uh, you're weather savvy enough to know the difference between you know fact and fiction when it comes to a lot of weather related things. But let's run through a few tornado myths this evening because these are still some of the common ones. Uh, cracking the windows. When I grew up, that was a thing that uh, my you know, parents and grandparents told me to do in case of a tornado because your house might implode because of the pressure difference. No, that's nonsense. Um, all you're doing is just letting the wind in. Um, another common myth is that tornadoes never come here and here being across a river, over a hill, in cities, things like that. And all those are myths. Um, none of those things stop tornadoes. You need some pretty tall mountains to have much of an impact on uh, circulation in the atmosphere, uh, wind shear, things like that, uh, and we certainly don't have anything like that around here. Tornadoes can occur just about anywhere. Another common myth, and this is another thing that I heard growing up, is hey, go to the basement and go to the southwest corner of your home. Um, that is not a thing that is necessary. Uh, the direction does not matter at all. The most important things are get to an interior room. If you have a basement, go to the basement and get away from windows so that flying glass is less of a, uh, a potential problem. All right, so we'll continue on with more interesting factoids and reminders with Severe Weather Awareness Week coming up Thursday and Friday. We might have some severe weather to contend with on Saturday. We'll talk about that in this video in just a couple of minutes. In the meantime, as of 7-11 uh, this evening, rain pushing in from the west. Most of us are going to get wet before the evening is through, and there's even a little bit of lightning and thunder as of just after 7 o'clock in the Lima area. And there was a severe thunderstorm warning earlier for a couple of counties in north uh, northern Indiana. Not expecting severe weather around here, but uh, can you uh, hear some thunder before the night is through? That's going to be a possibility. Hourly rain chances for our Thursday. Peaking early and then again in the afternoon. There might be a little bit of a lull, a drier interval, mid to late morning, but I think showers will become increasingly likely again as we get into the afternoon. This is a cold front heading our way. It's actually a pretty strong cold front. Uh, showers first thing in the morning. Here's that little midday lull perhaps for a couple of hours. And then by lunchtime, showers are pushing back in. Now, I think there's gonna be a pretty sharp temperature drop as we go towards the second half of the afternoon from north to south. We might have one of those uh, situations at around say five o'clock where it's 40 degrees in Kinsman in Northern Trumbull County and it's 60 degrees in East Liverpool. Um, something like that. But even down towards East Liverpool and the Ohio River, temperatures will drop. Just it'll take a few more hours into the evening. But uh, our confidence is indeed increasing that this front will stall far enough to the south that most of our TV viewing area is going to dry out for a time Thursday night and heading into Friday. Now, we're not going to be able to totally rule out just yet a little bit of rain lingering in Lisbon and Hanoverton and Selineville and East Liverpool, places like that into Friday morning, but it's a decreasing chance. The farther north you are, it's almost a certainty at this point that you're going to be largely dry on Friday. Maybe even a little sunshine trying to break in uh, north of Interstate 80, especially Friday afternoon as high pressure briefly, and I mean briefly, pays us a visit just off to our north. Either way though, the rain's coming back. Friday night, some of this could be a little bit heavy. There could be some thunder. We'll get into the warm sector on Saturday. What we mean by that is this warm front pushes to the north and east. We get into this air mass right here, and this air mass is going to be mild. 
we'll get into the mid 60s. It's going to be a little more humid. Now it's not going to be like a July day, but there'll be an increase in dew points. There's going to be a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere on Saturday. Winds down here at the surface where we are, kind of out of the southeast, aloft though, screaming westerly winds. Quite a bit of wind shear. Um, and if we get some intervals of sun and uh, the dew points come up high enough, we might have to concern ourselves with a gusty thunderstorm and maybe, maybe even a low-end isolated tornado risk, uh, especially early in the afternoon on Saturday. If everything comes together just right, it's not something we're very confident about right now, but it's something we'll watch because I do think this will be a highly sheared environment. Other than that, though, wow, what a day. I mean, we'll get well up into the 60s, even though showers will come and go as we uh, kick off the weekend. We've been talking about how this is going to be a pretty healthy drink of water, but rainfall amounts will not be as high as in central and western Ohio. I think around our television viewing area, we'll be pretty close to that two-inch mark, inch and three-quarters to two inches or so between now and late Saturday. It's not all going to come at once, and in fact, we'll have a pretty prolonged dry interval, it looks like, Thursday night into Friday. But between tonight and Thursday, and then... Friday night into Saturday, uh, you know, the rainfall is probably going to add up to at least, you know, an inch and a half, probably close to two inches in a lot of spots. The flash flooding risk, uh, something we can't rule out over the next 24 hours. It's a low end risk. We're not real concerned about it here locally. Uh, the, the chances ramp up on Thursday as you go off to the south and west. And then on Friday, even though it will be largely dry during the daylight hours Friday with rain chances returning Friday night, uh, this will be an elevated risk for some uh, flooding issues in central and especially western and southwestern Ohio around Cincinnati and Dayton into southern Indiana as well. So it's no surprise that the highest river flood uh, potential will be uh, from about I-71 on west across uh, western Ohio into Indiana. Some of our local rivers and streams, the Mahoning River, uh, especially near Levittsburg, Eagle Creek, Phalanx Station uh, around Braceville, Levittsburg and southwestern Trumbull. That could be another uh, one of our uh, local waterways that runs a little bit high, um, particularly on Saturday after a couple of intervals of wet weather. So that's something we'll be uh, keeping an eye on in the next couple of days. Temperatures will uh, not be a big story beyond Saturday. Uh, Sunday's going to be a nice day. We'll have sunshine. Temperatures closer to average through Monday. I think there will be a cool shot during midweek, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, with moderating temperatures later in the week. But I don't see anything uh, you know crazy here on the high end or the low end over the next 10 days and probably even up to two weeks. I do think that April is likely to come out in the wash as pretty close to average or maybe even cooler than average but uh, you know today's only March 22nd. We'll have a better grip I think on the April forecast overall coming up in about a week as we get some fresh long range modeling. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Wednesday evening. On Thursday, we'll uh, talk about uh, the upcoming rain chances. We'll have an update on that you know, potential uh, for severe weather on Saturday. And uh, we'll look ahead again towards next week. That's coming up on Thursday.